Welcome back, Fire Team 2, Shift Fire, the exploration and appreciation of all things military culture. I am Azure Wright, former Green Beret, one of your hosts, and right next to me, the presence. His presence I feel. A deep presence. A disturbance in the force, maybe? Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Izzy. Cameron Fath, former Army Ranger, and today you are tuned in to an episode of FTX, or Field, Field Training, Training Exercise. Exercise. And today's episode is all about how to build a ghillie suit. You guys asked for it. We're gonna give it to you, baby. <laughs> and in a future episode, we're gonna show you how to properly use it. Cameron, what is a ghillie suit? A ghillie suit is a piece of equipment typically found in a sniper section or a reconnaissance section that allows the user to blend in with his surroundings. If made and utilized properly, that's a big if. We see them in pop culture all the time, yes. especially in like Call of Duty, all ghillied up. The infamous- All ghillied up mission, infamous yeah. Infamous mission, you're running around in ghillie suits. When you lay down, you just become invisible with no effort, right? right guys can walk right by yeah. it. Yeah, just by laying down, just by wearing the ghillie suit, you are virtually invisible. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the Deathly Halls. It's the cloak of invisibility. Exactly. The ghillie suit is only as good as the user can make it, right? right? So a lot of the times it is handmade. You can buy them, I'm sure. You can out buy the world, them. But. You can buy them on the internet, but a lot of folks will kind of steer you away from that direction just because there are so many more benefits from building it yourself. And mm. if you could remember on our War Wallet episode, I bought that netting and I mistakenly said, uh, I might use this to build a ghillie suit. And you guys wouldn't stop mentioning it, so here we are. Yep, so after virtually days of work, many pricked, frink, many pricked fingers and a lot of beer, I was able to build one for you. You ready? Let's do it, man. Where do we start? All right, man, let's start at the very beginning. I was born 1995 on a very- Start a little bit later okay, than that. A little, yeah. little earlier, right? So let's talk about materials. You need a base to build upon, right? right. So. Luckily, from my time in active duty, <laughs> I have so many spare uniforms. One of the benefits of building your own ghillie suit is you can build it to any environment that you see yourself in. The snow, desert, exactly. forest. You want a good base, so I typically like to use a two-piece system. The next thing you're gonna need is your netting, right? So the thing that you're going to attach to the base in which you attach all your vegetation to and all your jute to. Uh, all right. So this is, I would argue, next to the most important thing you need. And you can get this from a surplus store, just like I did. I've seen people use a soccer goal net and oh, just spray okay. paint it. Makeshift, makeshift netting. You can get super creative. So as long as you've got something with cross sections pretty near each other, you can do this. Because so like, you need to attach stuff to it. I like to use E6000. It worked out really well. It takes about 48 to 72 hours to fully harden, mm. but I mean, after 15, 20 minutes, it's, you can touch it and everything. So it allows you to work faster. And when you're done, you can, you know, keep sewing, keep attaching jute, and then just let it out to dry. Nice. And then you'll have a crazy, crazy waterproof bond. I happen to get the little big one just because <laughs> I used a lot of this, so. That was an overload, you actually used quite a bit? Yeah, no, I went through two tubes of the 10.2 ounces. I got some needles, and I have my thread, I got it in just a khaki, but you can get it, I would recommend getting a little thicker one, and I realized that too late, but that's why you have glue to kind of strengthen your stitches. I like to use, obviously, some scissors. Pliers are a huge help for this, especially. What part? Um, sewing. Sewing. Oh, so when you start like getting thick material or you put your glue down and you have to sew through your glue, like for canvas pads that I'm gonna show you, um, it gets really hard. Uh, okay. Like the material, some material is really thick and just pushing the needle through the material gets hard. So using pliers, grabbing the needle, forcing it through, going on the other side, pulling it out, will give you a little bit more of a grip and it'll really, really help you out. Obviously 550, this is what I have left over from everything on it. The a rest giant of the, spool, yeah. The rest of the 550 is actually attached to my ghillie suit right now. But that is vital because A, it acts as vegetation, and B, you use the 550 to tie in the vegetation that really makes you camouflaged. Yeah. Finally, jute. What is jute? Jute is burlap strings. The older it gets, the more you know wet it gets, the more money it gets. It looks like nature. It gets better with time. It's like a fine wine. Mm. So jute makes an excellent base layer, and this is what you're pretty much gonna find on almost every single ghillie suit. So, oh God, that was a bad idea. That was a terrible idea. Can you make your own jute? 
If you can get your hands on burlap, right. you cut it in the strips and just basically pull out the cross sections and boom, you have jute. A little that tedious takes, maybe. Yeah. That takes a long time. And I cannot stress this enough. Building a ghillie suit is time consuming. You need time, you need patience, and you need a six pack of beer. Then finally, some other things that made it really helpful. I have some khaki uh, Krylon camouflage. The glue has a shine to it when uh, it's okay. dried, so I use this to kind of flatten everything out, not to mention the canvas pads I attached, which I actually don't have on the table because I forgot them. If you have to go through rocks and you want some added protection, uh, okay. by sewing them on your chest, you're keeping your uniform together and protected, and you're giving yourself a little bit of added comfort mm. as well. So what's this, Cameron? This actually is called a sniper veil. The veil is super cool because it also helps to break out your outline. Where'd you go, Cam? Where'd I go? I'm right here. Aww. I'm right here. You can almost Frankenstein, you know, pull parts from this. Right. Ghillie suits are known for being really hot. If you wanted to and you have the time and you're super creative, you can cut the back out or cut parts that aren't, you know, really necessary as far as keeping the suit together and just sew in mesh so you have airflow. Oh, through. perfect. Wow, yeah. You, yeah, you gotta get creative, I guess. Yeah, ghillie suits, you can get super creative. There's some amazing ghillie suits out there. Mine I'm pretty impressed with, but it's because I made it. But uh, <laughs> You should be proud of your work. But it also, you know, it could be improved with like adding some ventilation and other things. But I'm ready to show you guys how to get into it. So Cameron, how long would you say it takes to make a ghillie suit? It took me like about three days. All combined, yeah. about 20 to 24 hours. Whoa. If I added every chunk of me like, you know, coming home and start, yeah, about yeah. 24 hours of work. But for your convenience, luckily I have a very brief video for you from my living room of me starting the process. So let's go and take a very quick look of how I started. So first step, we need to take off the pockets just for extra and the Velcro so you're not picking up any dirt when you're low crawling. Uh, just be careful, you can use scissors or a knife, just cut at the threads right here till you get a little seam start to come off. But just be careful because you might accidentally cut a hole in it. But if you do cut a small hole, it's not the end of the world. These ghillie suits aren't meant to be perfect. And we're gonna cover it with a little bit of canvas. And we're back! Whoa, Cameron. Uh, very fast, very that fast. Was a, uh, th that was a very interesting and very brief, uh, and I'm sure not reflective of how much work you put yeah, into no. this thing, man. So that's step one. All right, so I got a canvas tarp from Harbor Freight for about seven bucks for a big, big roll of it. Save yourself some money. Now we're gonna add some protection to the front or the face down portion of the ghillie suit just to prevent any tearing and add a little bit more comfort when you're dragging yourself through the dirt. Um, I'm cutting squares off to put from the top of the breast where the Velcro is and grab yourself a furry friend to help if you want, but we're gonna go ahead and place two canvas straps on each side. Um, just to add protection. All right, so I basically went ahead and used my adhesive to glue the center of the canvas pad down just to give me something to work with. Now it's not gonna move around when I'm sewing it. Uh, needle and thread, it's really time consuming. So if you're gonna start making a ghillie, make sure you have the time. Um, I'm going around the edges and just folding the edge of the canvas just so uh, for wear and tear of this frame here, because I cut it off my tarp, I don't want it, uh, you know, obviously leaving a mess and uh, breaking while in use. So then once I sew down the edges, I'm gonna go ahead and take my adhesive again and just glue over it and then take like a plastic knife and spread it down to protect my sewing. Um, this is a time, like I said, it's a time consuming process. So uh, pick your battles right. Managed to sew on the canvas uh, strips onto the front um, just to secure the threading and to add a little bit more durability. I'm gonna go ahead and take my adhesive. I'm gonna lay a border around the pads and then you're just gonna need something to spread it with. You can do like a plastic knife fork. I just got a little cake spreader that I don't mind tossing after this. Um, but you're gonna go ahead and Doesn't have to be perfect. 
ghillie suit's gonna get messed up anyway. We're gonna crawl through the dirt. Okay, I take my cake spreader, lay down a good bead. I'm just gonna spread it over the threading. And I'm gonna spread it over the edge just to create another layer of protection. Just like that. Thank you, me, for explaining how the canvas gets applied to the front of the ghillie suit. Let's move on to applying our netting, right? Okay. The nitty gritty, if you yes. will. So, um, I recommend having a friend help you. But if you don't have one, literally take your blouse, put it on the back of like a chair, and then use that as kind of a base to apply your netting. But okay, if you do cool. have a friend, just ask him, hey friend, do you mind turning around for me? I, have to, I don't mind. And just basically, drape it over him, have him hold it, and either start sewing little pieces on it just to keep it in place. I started with just the glue right off the bat, and then I took it off and let it dry. The pants, super easy. Lay the pants down, throw a net on top of it, and start putting glue down. The points I sewed was I sewed the top of the shoulders because you're gonna put a lot of vegetation there going down, and then I also sewed across the top here, and I sewed all the way down the back to the butt. After I sewed, I took my glue and I basically glued over my sewing to make them strong so they're not gonna break. And then in the middle, I, I also sewed little cross sections just to keep them down. And over the cross sections, I glued and then I took more glue and started gluing the rest of the netting down. And then you let that dry. The more glue, the merrier. Just as long as it doesn't become a giant glue thing. So right? glue, gluing and sewing in concert with In one combination okay. would be a perfect. So we have our netting on, right? right? It's dried, it's good to go. You've shaved off the excess netting. Now it's time to start applying jute. And how tedious is that process, This is Cameron? a decently tedious process. <laughs> a lot of people think that a ghillie suit means you need to be a walking bush, right? That's very false. You look like walking Chewbacca. Uh. Like, like, <laughs> like forest Chewbacca, and that's not what you want. Texture is a big thing, and like if you're just this giant walking thing, you're gonna, even if you're the same color, you're gonna stick out. Yeah, kind of a, more like a round, hairy ball. Exactly, so, and the actual thing that makes you invisible is vegetation. It's right. not the jute. The jute, it just acts as a base layer. Just to break up the just lines? Just to break up the line, because okay. the human eye is attracted to human shape. For example, biologically, we're programmed to identify things that look like us because of fight or flight. So the ghillie suit is designed to break that shape apart. So people won't literally see an outline of a person and go, whoa! Attaching the jute. What I do is I grab, you know, a little bundle of them, not too thick. So we'll say about there, about, you know, eight, six to eight strings. I fold it in half and I'm gonna start girth hitching. Oh, okay. This on there. So what a girth hitch is, is I fold it in half, I make a bite, I take that bite, find my netting, I loop it through. Actually, I wanna go make sure this jute's going down. That loop is here. I'm just gonna take the rest of this jute, put it through the loop, and pull it out. The jute is attached and it's flowing down. So, through many hours of doing this, <laughs> I would say put jute every three inches and then kind of you know, not necessarily all next to each other, like boom, 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 you'll have too much jute. So after you prep all that, take that 550 cord, same thing you did with the jute, place the 550 cord. Honestly, you can't use enough of this stuff. It's great just cause, like I said, the vegetation is what makes you truly invisible. And the more vegetation you can attach in different points, the more successful you may be. So same thing, fold in half, form a bite, put it through the loop, place the both running ends through, just pull it out. Say this was a lot of grass or something, I pulled off the ground, I could just basically put it like this and just do a square knot on top and boom. It's that easy, it's folks. It's that easy, not that easy. 24 but, hours of work later. But Izzy, what about the veil? That's right, what about my head area? My head area looks like a human head area, that is not Satisfactory. A couple options you can do for your veil. You can sew on a hood. Take some of your netting, cut it, sew it to the top in the form of a hood. Oh, and something you can kind of flip on and flip off. Yeah, and then you just basically sew it to your base like that, and then you can attach everything right there. What I did is I did the boonie cap method. So, boonie cap, very straightforward. Everybody knows what a boonie cap is. The bucket hat, yes. if you will. Here we have my boonie cap. Nice. You're like, Cameron, that doesn't look like a boonie cap at that all. That is nothing like it. It doesn't smell like a boonie cap either. It doesn't. What I did is cut out 
the top. That way you can either get some mesh, make the mesh the top of the boonie cap. For, for ventilation. For ventilation, exactly. Just because these get so hot, man, you want airflow. And then another thing you can do, just because when we show you how to use this, shadow is another important ah. thing to consider. So I cut the top of my bill down because if the sun's over me, it's gonna cast a shadow on my face and black is very identifiable, yeah. right? And the human eye is drawn to stuff and there's positive and negative space. Yeah, I cut the flap just to prevent shadow from happening on my face. You wanna have this long enough to where it can go to your scope or optic. Ah. So that way you can put this over to kind of break up your shape if you're sitting there looking down a site for military application or for hunting. So we've talked about netting, we've talked about canvas pads, we've talked about attaching jute, attaching 550. We're done, right? No. We're not done. No. Because so, it looks like a really clean suit yeah, at this point. Now you have point. a very shiny ghillie suit and nature is not clean. You have to do something called a ghillie wash, which means you gotta go get really, really dirty. <laughs> so, you know, find a puddle, find a place that if you have an open cut and you go in it, it looks like, you're probably gonna get, you know, a staph infection <laughs> or some, or you have to re-up on your tetanus shots. Uh, no, don't do that. Uh, I've heard people dragging this thing behind their truck through like mud and whatnot. That's the great thing about jute, like I said, it's like a wine. Yeah. The older and dirtier it gets, the better it works. And let me just put a disclaimer out there. All the knowledge that I know about ghillie suits is directly taken from friends that have gone through sniper school, friends that are in the sniper section and regiment. I have no affiliation other than being in a reconnaissance section in the National Guard. I have not attended sniper school, so I am not claiming that I am a sniper. All of this information has been given to me by awesome dudes, and I want to be able to give it to you. Here we are, Cameron. Here we are. Your so, ghillie suit. Right. And is this done? This is as done as it gets. Yeah. But that's a good sign. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. This is going to be as complete as it is until you get to the spot where you're going to be utilizing this. You're gonna take it out, you're gonna veg it up, and then go. Israel's gonna be my model. I can see this getting really hot out there. Oh yeah. We got a pretty good ghillie right here. So if you can look, the veil is breaking up his shape here. He doesn't really look like a person. It just kind of looks like a blob. That looks great. <laughs> good <laughs> job, Cameron. This yeah. is about the, I, I, this is about as snipery as I have ever gotten. So really? thank you for letting me at least sample this. Yeah, no problem. I'm looking forward for you putting this thing on and me coming out and coming after you while you're stalking me. Well, folks, thank you for joining us for this episode of FTX. Join us in part two. Cameron's gonna get all gillied up, as they say, and he's gonna head out into the field. I'm gonna try to find him, so that should be a lot of fun. If you run from a sniper, you're, you're only die, die tired. tired. That was lame, and I'm not a sniper. But, all right. Precon platoon kicks butt. <laughs> we'll see you on the next one, fire team. Just ask him, hey friend, do you mind turning around for me? I, I don't mind. And just basically drape it over him, have him hold it. Right, right. guys can walk right by yeah. it. Yeah, just by laying down, just by wearing the ghillie suit, you are virtually invisible. It's kind of like the, uh, you know, the Deathly Halls. It's the cloak of invisibility. Exactly. I can see this getting really hot out there. Oh yeah.